Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, very welcome to this video message. We are greeting especially those who are in India. We miss you very much. But also all others who are in Africa or other parts in the world, you are very welcome to this video message. Now we have it on our hearts in the next couple of weeks to send you several video messages that you may be encouraged and build up in faith. Today, I would like to speak about the master of the storm. We are all going through a storm at the moment. The Corona crisis is worldwide and it's turning the world upside down. Now, the question is, are we only looking up on the storm or do we see the master of the storm? Do we see the one who is in control? Now, first of all, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you believe that God is the sovereign ruler of the universe? Do you believe that God is in control always? And my next question to you is, do you believe that God is in full control in view of your life and of your personal circumstances? You see, maybe we say, yes, God is in control in a general sense. But the question today is, do you believe that God is in control in this crisis that is happening when he is seeing your life and your circumstances? I want to read one verse from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. In Romans 8, verse 28, Paul says, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God. That's a divine promise. And that's a promise that we can build up on, especially in the time of crisis that we are going through. And especially in view of our personal circumstances. God is in control. There is nothing out of his control. Everything works according to his plan and according to his purpose. Now, sometimes suddenly things happen in our life that overwhelm us and we are thinking i'm losing control and we are troubled we are overwhelmed by the circumstances the question is what are we doing in these times now that's the reason why we have set up this video series that we may be occupied with the master of the storm that's god's desire that we turn our eyes upon the lord jesus if we do that, we will be encouraged and we will be strengthened in our faith. So we need to do it in a very practical way. And today we are going to see the master of the storm, the Lord Jesus, who is the son of the living God. Now, when we re speak about the storm, we have to ask the question, where is the storm coming from? Does it happen by chance or is there any author? Is there any, anybody who is behind the storm, who has sent the storm? Now, I am convinced that God is the author of the storm. We read in Psalm 107, verse 25, For he speaketh and raises the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. You see, God only needs to speak, and the wind picks up, the wind comes up, and God is the author of it. So, the question is, what is God's purpose? And God has always a purpose when he allows a storm to happen. You see, there are several things that God wants to teach us when a storm is allowed in our lives. Sometimes God wants to bring us back from a wrong track, from a wrong way that we have taken. Think of Jonah. Jonah was running away from the Lord. And what did the Lord do? He sent a storm wind to bring Jonah back and to send him to Nineveh again. Think of Job. Job was a self-righteous man and he had started to be proud of his righteousness. What does God do? God speaks to him out of a whirlwind and he speaks right to the heart of Job. And this conversation that we have, that we read in the Bible between God and Job changed the life of Job into a good direction. Now, sometimes God allows storms to happen to show us something of his power and of his glory. You see, that's always God's desire that we become, that we get a new impression of his majesty and that he is in control. That's God's desire. You see, 
For this, he is using crisis. Crisis builds character. And many times when we go through a crisis, it's God's intention to build our character, to mature us in faith. That's God's desire. We shall grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And one other thing God wants to teach us when we go through a crisis. He wants to teach us that he is with us always. That's the promise the Lord Jesus gave to his disciples before he left them. He says, I will be with you always, even unto the completion of the age. And in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, we read, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's God's promise. But these things we really learn while we are going through a crisis. In Isaiah chapter 43, God says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. You see, God is in control. He allows the waters to come. He allows the storm to arise. But he says, if you go through that, I will definitely be with you. And I will carry you and I will, I will strengthen you. In Isaiah 46, verse 4, he says, Even to old age I am he, and unto worry hairs I will carry you. It is I that have made, and I will bear, and I will carry, and I will deliver. You see, that's God's promise. And we may lean up on his promises. We may stand up on his promises underneath our everlasting arms. Especially when we go through the crisis, we may remember this wonderful promise. Paul experienced this. You see, the Apostle Paul, several times in his life, he suffered shipwreck. Three times, he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And in Acts chapter 27, we find one example how the Apostle Paul, he went into a storm, but he received the divine promise, I am with you and you will be saved out of the storm. And God fulfilled his promise. Paul was saved and also the 276 men who were with him. Now I would like to read a passage from the Gospel of Mark that shows us the glory of Christ, who is the master of the storm. Let us turn to Mark chapter 4, and we will read from verse 35. And on that day, when evening was come, he says to them, that's the Lord Jesus, let us go over to the other side. And having sent away the crowd, they take him with them as he was in the ship. But other ships also were with him. And there comes a violent gust of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it already filled. And he was in the stern, sleeping on the cushion. And they awake him up and say to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And awaking up, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Silence, be mute. And the wind fell, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you thus fearful? How is it that you have not faith? And they feared with great fear and said one to another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? It's very interesting how this passage starts. It says at the beginning, On that day when evening was come, he says to them, Let us go over to the other side. The Lord Jesus is not forcing his disciples, but he says, let us go. You see, in the Old Testament, there was the law. And the law says, you have to do, you have to go, you have to do that. But when Christ came, we read in John chapter 1, with Christ, grace came into the picture. And under grace, we are not forced to do things, but we are encouraged to do things out of thankfulness for what God has done for us. That's why we read again and again in the epistle to the Hebrews, let us, let us do this or that. Let us do it with liberty. Let us do it with confidence. That's God's desire for us. And the Lord Jesus encouraged his disciples to follow him. And that's even his desire for us today. And then he goes on and he says, and it says that, there came a violent gust of wind. Now, 
Who was the author of the wind? It was the Lord Jesus himself. It was God himself. He is the master of the storm. He is the originator. I'd like to read a verse from Psalm 89. We read in Psalm 89, verse 8 and 9. God of hosts, who is like unto thee, the strong Jah, and thy faithfulness is round about thee. Thou rulest the pride of the sea. When its waves arise, thou stillest them. You see, God not only creates the storm, but he's also the one who stills the storm. He is always in control. And when the Lord Jesus asked his disciples to cross the lake, he knew perfectly what they would face there on the lake. He knew all the dangers that they would experience, but he also knew the salvation that he would bring unto them at the right moment. And it's the same with us. If the Lord is leading us in a certain direction, if the Lord is asking us to do something where we are losing control and where we have to depend upon him, we may trust that he has a good way. And even though there are difficult circumstances, even though there are problems that may occur, we may trust the Lord that he is in full control and he has a good plan and a good purpose with everything that he allows to happen. Now, the ship was filled with water and it says in verse 38 that the Lord Jesus, he was in the storm sleeping on a pillow. Now, the Lord was not affected by these external circumstances. He was calmly, quietly sleeping on the pillow. You see, it says in um, Jeremiah chapter 17, in Jeremiah chapter 17, we read that he is the blessed man that confideth in Jehovah and whose confidence Jehovah is. That's exactly the Lord Jesus. He trusted in the Lord and he made the Lord his confidence. He was the author and finisher of faith. And that's why he could sleep peacefully even in this storm. And that's his desire for us as well, that we learn from him. You see, the Lord Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 14, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. And we may experience the same peace that the Lord Jesus has experienced here in this world. We read in Psalm 4 verse 8, In peace will I both lay me down and sleep, for you, Jehovah, alone makes me to dwell in safety. That's exactly what the Lord Jesus experienced when he was sleeping there on the pillow in the boat. And he wants us to experience this. This needs growth. We need to grow in confidence. We need to grow in faith. We need to grow in the knowledge of grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we see that growth, for example, with Peter. Peter, he was afraid in this situation here when he was with the other disciples in the boat and he saw how the ship was filled with water. But Peter, later on, in Acts chapter 12, we find Peter sleeping. What were the circumstances? Peter was sleeping in prison. On that day, his brother James was executed. He was beheaded. He was killed. And Peter was expecting probably the same thing for him to happen on the next day. Now, normally we would expect Peter to be fearful and to be awake in that situation. But we read that Peter, he slept quietly on the, in that night. He had learned to trust his Savior and Lord. And God wants us to make the same experience. You see, God, sometimes he allows a storm to happen in our hearts as well, but he is the one who can still the storm, who can bring it to an end. Now, when God sends us on a certain way, he has the desire to show us something of his power and of his glory. I want to read a verse from Psalm 107, verse 23. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, these uh, see the works of Jehovah and his wonders in the deep. You see, the more we are willing to let go and to surrender everything to God, the more we are going to see of God's wonderful workings in our lives. 
but sometimes that means we need to go into the deep. We need to leave things behind. And then when God allows the storm to happen, when God allows things to happen that are out of control for us, we are going to see how he intervenes. But he wants to keep us in peace and he wants to keep us in perfect peace. Isaiah writes in Isaiah chapter 26, some very encouraging words. I'd like to read it to you. It says there in verse 3, You will keep in perfect peace the mind stayed on you, for he confideth or he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Jah Jehovah is the rock of ages. That's God's desire for us, that we trust in him and the result will be peace flooding our hearts. You see, when there is a danger, when there are difficult circumstances, it's God's desire that we go into prayer, that we bring before him everything, every burden that we have in prayer. That's why Paul says, uh, Paul writes to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 4, and he says in verse 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything we shall ask God for his help, and we shall present our supplications with thanksgiving before God. And then he says, And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard, he, he will keep our, it will keep our hearts in perfect peace. That's a wonderful promise. But we will only experience this when we go into prayer. Now, the disciples in this situation, they did the right thing. They went to the Lord Jesus and they told him about the circumstances. You see, that's what we need to do. When we realize there is something that is overwhelming us, there is something that, that's, causing, that's causing us to be afraid, we always need to present these things before the Lord in prayer. That's how the peace of God will enter into our hearts. So the disciples, they did the right thing. They spoke about the situation to the Lord. And um, we see that the Lord Jesus, he answered their prayer. He answered their, uh, their words. When they came before him and presented him their need, the Lord Jesus answered. And that's what we also need to do. Let us go to the Lord and bring him what is on our hearts. Let us pour out our hearts before him at all times. Not only when there is sunshine, but also when there are difficult times. David says in Psalm 62 that we should trust in the Lord always. I'd like to read these, these words in Isaiah chapter 62, uh, in, in Psalm 62, Psalm 62. It says in verse 8, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is our refuge. I want to emphasize trust in him at all times and pour out your hearts before him. Both is necessary. Not only when there is sunshine, but especially when we are going through the storm. Trust in him and pour out your heart before him. Now, the Lord, he wakes up and what he does is he manifests his divine power. He speaks just a couple of words and what is the result? The wind and the waves obey him. He had command, he had authority over the forces of nature and that shows us his divinity. He was sleeping on the pillow that shows us his humanity. He was tired as a man. But as the eternal God and as the eternal Son of God, he had the power from one second, from one moment to the other, to change the circumstances completely. And that's true for our lives as well. You see, God allows circumstances to happen. But when he has reached his goal with us, he can change things from one moment to the other. He is the Lord of peace. That's what we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. The Lord of peace. He speaks one word and there will be peace in our hearts. Maybe the circumstances will not change, but he can provide us with such a peace that it is overwhelming, that it is surpassing our understanding. Now, 
The Lord takes care and after this, what does he do? He rebukes his disciples. Why does he rebuke them? Because of their unbelief. You see, they did the right thing to present their case before the Lord, but the Lord says, you don't have to be afraid. Why are you afraid? I am with you. I am with you in this boat. And because I am with you, you don't have to be afraid. You see, they had a lack of faith in the love of the Lord Jesus and probably also in his power. But we read in 1 John chapter 4, perfect love casts out fear. If we have a perfect confidence in the love of God, we will not be afraid. And that's what the Lord Jesus expected the disciples to have in that situation, to trust him and to be without fear. We can all understand them. Probably we all would have reacted in the same way. But it's interesting. The Lord says, don't be afraid. By the way, that's a statement we find over and over again in the word of God. Don't be afraid. Now, when the disciples, when they saw the power of Christ, when they saw how he stilled the wind and the waves, they were overwhelmed. We read that before, when the wind and the waves were there, they were afraid. But when they saw the power of Christ and what he did with the forces of nature, they became very afraid because they realized it's our creator who is standing right beside us. And he is the one who has even authority to command the wind and the waves. He has authority. He is in full control. Nothing is impossible with God. That's a wonderful, wonderful truth that we have to be aware of. And I want to repeat the main purposes why God allows storms to happen. First of all, he allows a storm to happen sometimes to bring us back on the right way. Let's remember Jonah. Let's remember Job. Okay? Sometimes God is speaking to us to bring us back on the right way through a storm. Secondly, God wants to give us a new impression of his greatness. He wants to give us a new impression of his glory. And this is something that we receive, especially when we go through a crisis. Because crisis builds character. Yeah? If the sun is shining, if we are sailing smoothly on the water, we will may not have many experiences with the Lord. But when we're going through the storm, we are going to experience the care and the help of the Lord. And that will mature us in faith. That will build our character. And we shall learn, that's the third point, that God is with us always. Not only in the good times, but he is with us in the good times and in the bad times. And especially in the bad times, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's a promise that we need to claim, that we need to lean upon in our days, in the year 2020. Wherever we are, be it in India, in Germany, in Africa, in the United States, God is in control and God is with us. I'd like to close with a verse from 1 Timothy chapter 4. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, we read in verse 10, that we hope in a living God who is preserver of all men, especially of those that believe. You see, God has a special interest in us, in those who believe, in those who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. His eye is on us. And that's why we may not ask, Lord, do you not care that we are perishing? We read in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, He cares for you. Okay? Keep that in your mind. God cares for you. He has a special interest for you. And that's why we can recall the, the words of the Lord Jesus that he spoke to Jairus when Jairus went through a storm. Don't be afraid, only believe. Let us trust the author and the master of the storm.